If you will, just take a look at that belly. Look, oh my, oh, he, oh, he just pooped on me. Oh my God. Well, boys and girls, it is a beautiful fall day. Almost kind of feels summer-esque here in uh, Dallas, Texas. I am not from Dallas. If you guys didn't know, I'm from Austin, Texas. And I've been in a slump lately of not only catching big fish or many fish, but also not fishing anywhere new. And I know that's something that you guys really enjoy about me and my channel is that I travel across the country and fish college tournaments, or fished, past tense. Um, and all new places around the country that I hadn't been before and of course I was able to share with you guys the experiences of what I learned fishing new places and so I made a goal that I was going to fish a new lake every two weeks and I've been slacking a little bit so we're going to make up for those slackings this week I'm going to film uh, two to four videos whatever I can do on uh, two different lakes that I've never been to before the first one being today Lake Ray Hubbard this here is a average size lake for your you know dallas fort worth area i've heard some good things about this lake i've also heard some bad things about this lake and so my goal for today is going to be of course to catch fish but i'm really going to hopefully this <laughs> this fog doesn't damper my goals but i really want to drive around the majority of the lake looking for things that could help you guys catch fish one of the things that i know has been helpful to me is when i go to a new lake to have somebody or something tell me something about the lake. I don't need spots. I don't need places that are honey holes where people catch fish. I just want to be able to share with you guys uh, the experiences that I have and how I'm able to pick apart a brand new lake. And so today I'm going to be running an angler trip right here. All the information will be down below if you guys want to check out my angler trip. But I'm going to mark anything on this lake that I see, whether it's rocky banks, uh, bluff walls, a good area of wood, and of course anywhere that I catch fish, I will mark this as well today. And the, the purpose of that is not to share spots. I'm not here to rip anybody's spots. The main thing for the angler intelligence packs, as I've told you guys before, is that I'm not selling spots. I'm trying to help you guys, if you are brand new to a lake, get out there and catch some fish. And so that's what we're going to do. We launched the FX20 in the water, and now we're going to go find ourselves some fish. And with that said, throw the life jacket on because I'm fishing by myself today, so nobody here to save me if I die. And we'll see you guys on the water. Did not take me long to find my first spot. The ramp is right over there and I saw all these lay down trees, which of course are not in the water right now, but if the lake is flooded, those will be a great spot. And there's tons of bait fish around here. So I've heard this lake is definitely a rock lake and I am a rock and roll kind of guy. Also, I'm a tree kind of guy. So it's good to see this lake has all of them together. It is so confusing to me why the fish would not be back here because there is so much bait fish. I mean, like, they're popping everywhere. I've seen some fish come up and explode on them. I don't know if they're bass or not. Hope, I mean, I would assume they're bass. Could be carp though, carp do some dumb stuff. But definitely a cool little backwater woody area that I marked. The fish would definitely spawn back there. And I mean, I'm telling you, the fish are gonna move back here later on in the fall as, as soon as they realize the bait fish is here. Cause there are bait all over this place. Okay, I take that back. They ate the thunder cricket, but not the species I was looking for. Caught ourselves a white bass or hybrid or whatever this is. I don't know, all my species of non-largemouths. But right, that right there is probably what is eating all these bait fish. So I would call that a good sign that a predator fish is around here, but definitely not exactly what I was looking for. A little clue, I had just turned the camera off from talking and that thing steamrolled it. So I thought I had a giant, but I did not. Had a white bass. The water down here got clearer, so I'm gonna switch to a more shad colored square bill. There's one. What are you, my friend? You are a large mouth. Hey, yo. We're gonna go a ding, mark a catch. That's what I'm talking about. Not a big guy, 
but it is a fish on the 1.5. Heyo. And he is, oh, he's not even a keeper, and he's got a coal, coal thing in his mouth. That's dumb. Why would you ever put this thing in your live world? It's illegal. Open up the Angler app, boom, opens up the camera. Gonna take a picture of exactly what happened. Gonna say largemouth bass. We're gonna give this guy a 0.5 pounds, and then the gear has changed. So the gear is shallow crankbait and KVD square bill. Fun, baby. And we can say goodbye to you. And with marking that catch, now I marked all the weather data that goes along with that catch from barometric pressure to wind conditions, rain, all that jazz, water level based on the water gauge here at the lake. So I can hopefully start to pattern. If I was to, you know, come back here the next week, I can pattern ways to catch more of them. So that's good. First large mouth on a little riprap bank here. Pretty standard I've heard for this lake. There's one. You are not any bigger, I don't believe. Nope. You are just as small, but you're fighting good. You're a good fighter. Gee, hello there, buddy. Is this a guad? Is this a Guadalupe? No, it's a largemouth. But hey, there's number two. A ding on my hat. Pull up the app and it is the same stuff. There are fish on this bank. It's just a matter of, are there big ones? Oh, that was not a fish. That was a rock. That's a fish. Oh my goodness. Oh, that feels like a big one. That feels like a big one. It is, it is, it is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is it a catfish? There's no way it's a catfish. It's gotta be a bass. No? It's not fighting like a bass though. But I'm gonna fight it like it is. Oh, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is. It is. Let's go, baby. That's three casts in a row. This is my kayak net. Oh, baby, oh, baby. No, I just, I just botched it. Yes! <sighs> oh, y'all, I almost just completely messed that up. Look what I did. I hooked it on the net. Oh, that's a chunk. That's like a five. Oh, my goodness. Wow! That fish is so thick. I'm gonna back off this bank here. There's obviously fish here. I don't want the boat to hit the rocks. Look at that fish, y'all. That is incredible. That thing is so thick. That thing is it's almost gonna go five pounds and it definitely doesn't have a five pound head. It's just got a thick body. Oh my goodness. Reset. Can I put this baby on the connect scale? See how much she weighs. Yep, 4.88. Almost a five pounder. Raise pictures of her in a second, but another boat is coming. And I don't want them to see my fish. Just like that, we are marking some fish catches. We do have a wrapped boat that just pulled up on me. Wonder who that is. You know, ordinarily, if I was in a tournament, I would mark these fish catches and leave, but if there is fish eating here, I'm gonna stay. That's interesting how I've cranked some rock all day with the chartreuse black back. Didn't get a bite, and as soon as I switched to a more natural color, I got a bite. So I think these fish, pretty tuned in on bait fish, and if you're not throwing, you know, the right color, you're not gonna get bit. Another thing that I noticed about this bank right here where I caught those two fish and then the big one is that it's, the, the, the rock's actually like, deepened out so you can't exactly see it very well here but it got it's shallow here and then it got deeper closer to the bank and that is right where those fish were sitting is on the on that little drop there so my guess i could go back there with a jerk bait a deeper diving jerk bait and probably poke a few out of there so i'm gonna work the whole inside of this marina got that new lake vibe eh i was not recording i just changed out my battery and uh, I switched to the 2.5 because I didn't have any more 1.5 in this color. But I have another nice one. I don't think it's as big as the first one, but it's, it's good. Come on, buddy. come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, oh, come on, please, buddy. Oh, no, 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 get away from the prop. 
Get away from the prop. Get away from the prop. Yes. There we go. Okay, baby. That one's a four. <laughs> oh. Oh, man. Bait popped right out. Let's go. Boom. Mark the catch. Oh, man, y'all. This is fun. I understand that it's not always like this, but... Oh, it's fun like that. That's for sure. If you will, just take a look at that belly. Look, oh my, oh, oh, he just pooped on me. Oh my God. I'm sorry. But yeah. I can't believe I just poked his belly and he pooped. That is absolutely nasty. Look at my shorts. Ew. Ah, gosh, dang it. Oh, that's disgusting. That's what I get though. Poking the fish's belly. Okay, we're gonna try to get this stinking poop off me. That might be the funniest thing that has ever happened to me on the water. This would be a good time to plug the fact that my AFCO shorts are water resistant, so the, the poop is kind of sliding right off. And they're also incredibly stained. And uh, what's the thing, the, how it smells? Smell resistant, so they don't soak in smells very well. Stinking pooped on me. That was like diarrhea. Straight out of the booty hole. So the whole poop debacle is done. Let's weigh this fish. Is that the five? Yeah, it's the five. Get her on the connect scale. It's probably with three five is my guess. Oh, look at that. Three five three. Three five three. I will take that. That's just a fat, healthy fish. All right, buddies. Let's get 20 pounds today, folks. You guys down for that? Subscribe if you're down. Cause I'm down. Dude. It just got foggy y'all. I don't know if you can see how foggy it is, but I just looked behind me and I can't see like 500 yards anymore. Oh boy. It's a good thing it is a Tuesday because there's not many boats to run into today. I'll definitely take it slower in the fog though. Got him. Got him. That's what I thought. I thought I'd get one on the fluke. Bring it up in here. Bring it up in here. Yes, sir. Let's go. Boom, catch marked. See, I knew there had to be fish around a shallow little retaining wall thing like this. And they, I, I saw they were coming up to feed, but they weren't coming up very fast. They weren't exploding, really. They were just kind of rolling. So... Got myself a Strike King caffeine shad. Two and a half pounder, let's go. Nothing much to write home about in terms of size, but hey, it's a keeper and that's a quality keeper. That's not your, your average Texas skinny keeper. See ya, bud. All right, I have figured them out. They are on rock. They are on rock, boys and girls. The thing about that fish right there is that most people, your average fisherman would have just breezed right over that spot there with a, a square bill or chatterbait, whatever. But I know that there are fish in here. It just might take a little more time to get a few of them to eat, which, you know, may not be the best thing. Maybe it's better just to cover water and, and end up missing some of these fish, but I'm trying to cover all my bases and maybe the size can be with the slower. I don't know. I got a backlash, that's what I do now. Oh, good bite. Hey, exactly. Habbards are good. Oh, yes they are. <laughs> so are rocks. We have made it to the dam. Down here, at the bottom of Ray Hubbard. There's a huge restricted area that looks like it has some good, good rock in there, but it is restricted, so. No going in there, kids. So I fished the point back there, I didn't catch anything. So I'll just fish this for five minutes. Oftentimes fishing dams are great ways to fill your limit. So if you're in a high school tournament or college or whatever, and you need one or two more fish for your limit, oftentimes going down here and throwing a square bill or a shaky head can be great ways to fill your limit in a tournament. Oh, 
that's what you like to see right there. That's what you like to see. Let me get back here and grab it. Well, obviously the fish were feeding in this area at some point, and that is exactly what they were eating. So, let's take a look at my crankbait. It's definitely not like exactly accurate, but pretty dang close. This bait fish has a nice gold line on the top, the chartreuse line here, blue back, white belly. Pretty dang similar, if you ask me. Thank you, buddy, for dying so I could see what you look like. And with a little bit dingy water, that extra chartreuse and now the orange belly here, that doesn't help. The orange tiny little dot, but whatever. Obviously it caught him earlier, so I'm throwing pretty close to the right thing. screen off baby well to end this video my uh microphone decided to die on my camera so the audio i'm sure is going to sound all sorts of weak right now and uh, the lighting is horrible that's much better i'm using my mirror as a light source the bite was of course dependent on where the bait fish were uh but of course as today showed it was really not just bait fish it was where those fish were grouped up there was probably fish in every area that I fished, but the fish had to be together in a feeding mood in order to bite in that first riprap bank. For some reason, those fish were feeding and, uh, and ready to go. So, as I mentioned before, this was an intelligence pack type of day where I go out there and I record all sorts of data about the lake that I'm at for you guys at home to help you guys be more familiar with a lake, not just to show you guys spots where I caught fish. I marked a ton of stuff today that I graphed that uh, you guys, of course, will have to graph for yourselves, and then a ton of stuff on the bank that I did not have the time to fish. And I also went back on Google Earth and marked a lot of stuff that I was not able to mark while I was on the water because there was a whole second half of the lake that I wasn't able to get to. So of course, I'm not gonna mark random random crap, but I will mark stuff that I think uh, based on Navionics web app and based on Google Maps uh, has a likelihood of helping you guys catch more fish. And that will all be linked below. Of course, all the gear that I used, AFCO clothes that I was wearing, the rain gear, was very, very much necessary today. Everything is linked in the description below and we'll see you guys on the next exciting episode of TRF.